Welcome to I Rise Conversations with Joan. Welcome to I Rise Conversations with Joan. My name is Joan Wosu and I'm the award-winning author of the book, I Rise, The 10 Secrets to Getting Up When Life Knocks You Down. Today, we're going to be talking about art. And we all know art. Well, at least we've all seen it in the stores and maybe played around with it when we were little kids. But we, we all have an idea of what art is. Some people believe that we're all artists deep down inside somewhere. Well, I, I can't say that for myself. I don't think so. <laughs> well, art is more than just pretty pictures and images. It is a form of expression and a medium for most artists to convey their messages to the world. Today, we want to explore art as more than just a creative outlet, but also how it can impact and help improve mental health and also how you can create a thriving business from it because yeah, we like the money too. <laughs> so our guest today is Jody King. She's an artist, she's a teacher, an entrepreneur. She's also been an executive in a variety of industries for over 30 years and carries over 20 years of artistic experience. She paints primarily in abstract expressionism using paint and other media to convey outwardly her experience of mind, body, and spirit. At the heart of her work is a call to all of us to live unapologetically in our own truth. She hosts highly sought after workshops at a studio in Austin and across the US and her expressive art has been collected extensively. She empowers artists with the tools they need to turn their passion into a thriving business. She helps people in discovering their genuine power, their freedom and the pleasure through the use of art and creativity. Her no one is the boss of you. I really want to hear about that attitude towards painting life and creativity inspires both novice and veteran artists to produce honest art in her own words. She believes that her best voice is art. So she speaks loudly and boldly and encourages others to do the same. In doing so, she has taught thousands of people through her irreverent style of teaching that puts everyone at ease, reminding us we are all artists. Well, welcome, Jody, to the show. I'm so glad to be here. I cannot wait to have this conversation. Okay, so before we get into the fun stuff at art, you know, I, you know, I saw you nodding when I said everyone is an artist. Is that true? Are we all artists somewhere deep down inside? Deep. <laughs> I, I wholeheartedly believe this. Okay, so um, there was a study that was done where they, whoever they was or are, uh, they went into kindergarten classrooms. So, you know, age five or so, uh, went into the classrooms and they said, everyone who's an artist, raise their hands. And 100% of the kids raise their hands. Because we, you know, give us some crayons, give us some paint, right? At five, we have no fear. We are ready to go. We are born artists. Uh, then they went into the classrooms when they were in third grade. And they said, everyone here who's an artist, raise their hands. And only half of the kids raised their hands. And then they went into middle school and they asked the same question. Everyone here who's an artist, raise their hand. And only one child raised their hand. <laughs> And I have to tell you, Joan, I would not have been the kid that raised my hand because I looked at what it, that like kids that could draw, you know, or maybe they were painting, et cetera. And those were the artists. And I, I had been dancing since I was three years old, but I didn't, I wasn't um, a visual artist. So I didn't consider myself an artist, mm -hmm. but the truth is all of us have a form of creativity activity within us. You can be an engineer and be using your creative mind mm. to be um, figuring yeah. out a solution, right? Or, you know, you, it, it's across the board, whether you're a musician or you're a mother trying to figure out what's going on with your child. You're using your creativity. So all of us are artists in our own way. It's just that the world tends to um, define what that is and we tend to buy into it. That is true. <laughs> okay, so I agree. Yes, we're all <laughs> artistic in one form. My of work here is done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've been doing this now for over 20 years. How did your own journey begin? Because I know you just said you were not one of the kids who would like be, I'm an artist. How, how did you start painting? Yeah, great question. Because um, I didn't paint as a kid. I didn't paint in uh, middle school. I didn't 
uh, take art classes in high school. I didn't paint in college. I had no desire whatsoever because that was for those other, that was for the artists, right? With those, those other kids. Uh, and I, I was on my own at 18, uh, you know, taking care of myself and what I, I just needed a job, right? So I, I started working and I ended up doing several different things. I had a wine bar that was highly successful with my, uh, I call him my starter husband. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was, and we ended up selling. He's a, means, yes. <laughs> yes he's a, He's a great guy. Great guy. Anyway, my starter husband and I had a wine bar that was successful. I, um, I had ran a five-star restaurant. I, I did a lot of, I did interior design. There were several things that I did that was really successful. But one day I woke up as so many young mothers do when I was 35 and I just needed something for myself. I was giving and giving and giving and losing myself along the way, as so many of us do. Uh, and I woke up one New Year's Day. There was a group of us that were together and we were doing that New Year's Day conversation. Well, what do you want to do this year? Right. Uh, one of the people there was he was a, an artist. He, he was the only artist I knew. Uh, this was before the Internet, before um, I'm old. So uh, <laughs> so. I said, you know, David, I think I want to paint. And he said, so paint. And I said, I don't know how to paint. And he said, well, just paint. And it really had never occurred to me that I could just do that, that I, with, I, without formal training or anything. And I said, hmm. I don't even know where to start. And he said, go to the art supply store get some canvas, get some paint brushes, get some paint and start painting. It's easy, right? So that's exactly what I did. I just started painting. And to my surprise, they didn't totally suck. <laughs> all right, some of them did. Some of them did suck. <laughs> but not all of them did. And then, um, so, but they were collecting around me, right? I was painting, I was painting, um, uh, pictures of my kids, but I wanted to paint women saying sassy things, big shocker, right? Uh, that's what I felt called to paint. And so I started doing that. And then um, we had this little sweet little bungalow that was built in 1914. And we lived in this little town and they asked if they could put our house on the Christmas tour of homes, the big Christmas tour of homes in a town of 9,000. Um, but uh, it was a tourist town. And so lots of people came through my house and just in order to clean it, I put some of the paintings on the wall, like just to, you know, for artwork. Right. And uh, several people who came through asked who the artist was, could not believe it. And one of the people owned a store in that town and asked if she could start carrying my art. So you would think that that would be really exciting, that I would be so excited, but I was scared to death because I was imposter. I, I yeah. didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was just, you know, having a good time. So that led me on the journey to figure out what I needed to do, what are the things. And as an entrepreneur, it felt easy. I mean, that, that process I knew, it was like, oh, you want to do this thing? You want to sell this thing? Well, then you better make the best product possible. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. And my work started selling through that store and that's how it started happening. <laughs> well, I think that's such a beautiful story because I know that for me as well, I do get that itch from time to time where like, oh, maybe I should do this. But of course the voice is like, who the, you're, you're not, you stop it. <laughs> get back yeah. to your job. And I'm sure a lot of people listening to, you've had that that itch where you, you feel called to do something or to try something, but then you doubt yourself, the negative self-talk happens, or maybe you might even have someone as supportive as you did, where you said to him, I want to paint. And he said, then pain, you know, people might have people around them who are like, I want to pay them. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, please. Yeah. So give me a break. <laughs> yeah. Oh, listen, that would be exactly what you should tell me. If you don't want me to do something, tell me I can't. Then it's, it's game on. It's game on. But that's, but, that, but that's you. So that's good. That's a good personality trait. But for a lot of people, then they don't have the confidence or the courage to go ahead and do it because they're constantly looking for people to support them or at least to validate what they're thinking. But I, I think your story just shows that 
it's possible. What you, what you have to lose? You had fun doing it. But, you know, hey, it was still fun. But go ahead and try because you never know. And well, you make a great point because the mindset is is everything, as you know. I mean, with your book and uh, all of the things that you do in the world, um, mindset is everything. And because I had had so much uh, business success up until that point, mm -hmm. I and because I didn't go to art school and I, I was never sold that starving artist or maybe I just never bought it. I really wasn't that aware of the starving artist myth. I just thought, well, I'm going to just apply all these best practices to my business mm -hmm. and, and it, and it took off. So I didn't have to dismantle the starving artist thing. Like so many people have to do, you know, have to do that mindset work. I was just like, oh no, I just, mm -hmm. I just have to make the best product and market it well. Exactly. Okay. So you talk about honest art. What exactly does that mean? Is that dishonest art? Yes. Okay. And I'm and I'm guilty of that too. <laughs> so so here's what happened. Um, you know, I started painting. Like I said, I had these young kids at home. Um, but something started to shift within me. I was saying things, like I said, I wanted to paint women saying sassy things. Um, and so I started saying things on the canvas that felt good, that maybe I wouldn't have said uh, otherwise. Uh, for, for example, I painted uh, a, a woman just wearing nothing but a, a bra. So it was a torso painting. Uh, and she just was wearing a bra and it said, um, she wore nothing but a thong while folding the clothes to remind herself she was more than a mother. And I, I was feeling like I was losing some of my, you know, my sexuality. I was losing some of just the, the who-ness of who I was to motherhood, but I wouldn't dare say that to anyone, you know? So art gave me a vehicle to, to share my feelings and a kind of a safe place to do it because I actually, it said Penelope wore a thong. Who, I didn't even know a Penelope. Who is Penelope, <laughs> right? But it sure wasn't Jody. She didn't say I, right? So it was a way for me to express myself. And then slowly I, the, the act of creating and of doing this art, what I call honest art. And it was honest because that was just what I wanted to paint. That was just um, me. Uh, I, I've heard this saying, and I just love it. It says, no artist creates alone. And the reason we don't create alone is if we, if we can get still and just allow that creativity to flow through us. So I am a huge proponent of meditating and I like to sit and meditate and ground myself before I paint. But it's like opening up, like we're a vessel and we open up and we allow things to flow through us. And so that is what I call honest art. Um, Here's what's not honest art. So then I was painting these women uh, and I started looking at other artists art and I thought, oh, I love what they're doing and I love what they're doing. So I'm gonna emulate that, right? So I'm gonna try to make that kind of art. Well, th that's not what I'm called to do, right? If you are an artist and you are called to create something, I guarantee you, the universe is not saying, hey, go copy that person's stuff. That's mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do. No, that's not honest art. Mm -hmm. It might be pretty, but it's gonna, it's gonna lack the most important thing that is integral to all great art. And that is your energy, what you can bring to it, your own personal voice. That's dishonest art, in my opinion. I call honest art the art that you are created to make, whether that's a song or that's a book or that's a, a painting, it, it, a dance, whatever it is. That's absolutely, your honest art. Absolutely. I completely agree. And you were talking about, I'm not a, well, okay, now I'm an artist, but I'm not a painter yet. <laughs> uh, but just as you're speaking, you know, because I also wrote a book and I, I could just tell how it's different because I read some books sometimes and it's like, okay, this sounds like something else I've read before. So I think every form of art, there's some channel in, I, I strongly believe that too. There's some, there's a message from the universe that only you can tell in a particular way so if you try copying someone else, then it starts to feel a bit inauthentic and it's not, you don't enjoy doing it anyway. You know, deep down inside, because you're just like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. This is not truly me. But when it flows, when you really allow that 
whatever it is, that creativity, that energy, that source to really flow through you. It's just, it's phenomenal. Like I agree. Yeah. And it makes you stand with your feet a little wider, yes. right? In your shoulders back going this, something that was never in the entire universe before is now here because it came through me. That is so exciting. And then what happens? Oh, I get so excited about this. Then what happens is that, that will resonate with someone just like a song, right? Just when like when you maybe go through a breakup and then you hear this song that taps into that emotion that maybe you're not proud of or that you feel like you're you're hiding, but then that song validates your human experience, then that that's what we're here to do. And so art validates the human experience, especially if it's honest, it validates the human experience and then it makes all of us feel less alone. So from a mental health perspective, it not only serves others, but it serves us because of that mirroring. Wow. I, I know most people have never thought about art as impacting mental health, but again, you're even saying it's two ways. So it's you, the artist, you know, really live in your authentic self and being a source to help other people. So now you're helping yourself because that's an outlet, but you're also helping people who are consuming it, who it's resonating with. And they'll be like, oh, I just needed to see that it's speaking to me. It speaks to my situation. And that's really helpful. So I, again, I think with everything in life, when you're your authentic self and you allow yourself to be a vessel. Oh, so I, so I, I, I do love that. So I want to go back a little bit to what you were saying about the starving artist myth. I don't know if it's a myth or if it's true, but I think a lot of people we go into, doesn't even matter what area of life is. I think it's the whole imposter syndrome where we have stuff at the bottom. We're going to be hungry for a couple of years. Um, we need to do whatever we need to do. And that's where people can get stuck in the copying mode. Let's just copy people who have tried and be, become successful by doing it this way. Why try to go tap into a source that has never been done before? What would you say to people who are stuck in that mindset and are maybe starving artists right now? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So the thing is, is that first of all, I have two daughters that are both artists. One is a, one is a comedian and the other one is a writer, okay? And so when I say, I don't believe the starving artist myth um, and I teach the business side of the art business, I do this, also in part because I don't want to pay their bills. <laughs> I'm single. I got to pay for my own damn self. I don't want to pay their bills too. So I teach the business side of the art business because I really believe and I have seen over and over and over again that this works. But one of the things that we have to remember is that just like any business, there are um, various revenue streams. Okay. So like if you look at um, Starbucks, for instance, they have their main revenue streams, coffee. So let's say uh, visual artists have painting, right? Do so you have your main revenue streams? But even Starbucks has various different revenue streams. They sell, um, you know, pastries or water or, you know, what they do. So there are various different revenue streams. And that's what we have to understand as well as artists. So when you first start out, you may be doing things that are not just that one thing, like just like I'm painting a painting and I'm gonna sell that one painting, right? You might have to do commissions. Um, you know, you might, you, you know, for people, you might uh, do a pet portraits. You might do, you know, things that maybe are not your, your absolute passion, but they're gonna be your bread and butter. And mm -hmm. those are the things we're gonna do as we're getting off the ground, right? So these these various revenue streams and these various things that you can do, you don't have to starve. You really don't have to starve, but nobody is teaching this. Like art school doesn't teach artists how to make a business. No, it's and it's not, <laughs> it's not rocket science. You know, it's like artists believe that there's this secret handshake to get into galleries or to get into, you know, with art consultants or interior designers. There's no secret handshake. Here's how you do it. This is what you need to do to, to make this happen. And I just think we need to know this stuff because artists are so integral to our human experience. It is so important. We don't need 
any more, you know, wars or, um, or, or violence or anything that an artist are the feelers. We are the feelers of the, the world. We look at the songwriters. They, they take a, an experience and they, you know, reflect it back right? We're the feelers, the, the painters, we feel all the things. And then we take it, we reflect it back and we put it on the canvas. So I think that we need to all acknowledge ourselves as artists and as feelers, and then take that and use it to heal, to heal ourselves and to heal the planet. I love that. And, and, and I, get, I, I get really passionate. About I, <laughs> like, I, I love how you, yeah, we're healing the world We're we're doing all this great stuff, but you can also make a business out of it. And I think that's where a lot of people in art in general, like if someone said, I want to be a dancer, they're like, oh, go get a real job or go, you know, go be an accountant, go be a doctor, whatever. I think no one's talking about this enough, the business of art, where you can actually have a livelihood from doing what you love and enjoy every single day and you know sharing your message with the world because art is a way to convey a message to the world that might heal and help uh, people as well so so people so my some people might be listening now thinking okay but i just paint for fun you know it's just a hobby it's something i do where do i get started if they're listening to you right now and they're thinking okay really you mean i can quit my boring soul-sucking job and do this full-time and make money how do i get started yeah, great question. Okay, first of all, uh, don't quit your boring soul sucking job just yet. <laughs> what you want to do is you want to make sure you have a great product before you, you know, before you quit your soul sucking job, but you can create a great product in the meantime. Okay, so I know uh, a lot of artists that they have a full time job, and then they paint in the evenings, or they paint on the weekends. And uh, the key is to creating the best possible art that you can honest art, though, make it yours, make it. Every artist has something to say, make it yours. Okay. And then um, the first thing I would say is um, get the uh, get training. Okay, so I floundered along the way and uh, took me a long time to start to really make great art. Even though this, this store picked up my stuff, it, I would be so embarrassed to show you that art now. It took me a long time to get better at it. I created a course called the Color Course for Rebels that teaches all of this, but this isn't a plug for that. Just find a course, find a teacher that you resonate with um, and, and get some training to make the best art possible. Once you know that your art is getting good and just give yourself space to find out who you are as an artist. Don't think about selling it just yet. Just get into the creation. Uh, decide what it is you have to say. Decide what it is you like to use. I see so many artists that are like, oh my gosh, they go in an art supply store and they're like, I'll take the paint and I'll take the, uh, you know, the, um, the glitter and I'll take this and I'll take the that and I'll take this and they throw everything at the canvas and they're like, ah, it's too much. So then you get start pulling back you go, okay, what really do I like about this? And what do I like about that? So the first thing they need to do is they need to make the best product possible and enjoy it. Have fun, right? Let it come through you. And if you're having a really um, stressful time or if you're having a bad day, let that come out too. Don't concentrate on making pretty art, concentrate on making honest art. So let's say your day has gone to hell. Then when that happens for me, I will grab pens and I'll grab charcoal, I'll grab pencils and I will just scribble you know it's one thing if you're feeling light and flowy and your marks are going to be light and flowy and it's another if you're angry or hurt or you know in a in a bad place those marks are going to be like <laughs> that right let that energy come through let it move through you um so don't don't concentrate on making pretty art concentrate on making honest art and you will get a lot of what i call fugly art along the way <laughs> <laughs> you will make some fugly art but if you get the training then you can take that fugly art and make something really powerful with it and make it impactful okay so don't quit your job yet get some Not yet in and get good at creating good honest art so get a good product before you think about selling and quitting your day job yeah 
And then when you're ready, <laughs> then you do, then you take the art biz for rebels. And I'll okay. teach you how to sell the, the art. Okay, and then you teach them how to sell the art. Okay. Yeah. Um, we've all heard about NFTs and how people have made millions or billions or whatever it is from NFTs. Um, and some people are thinking, what the what are NFTs? So what are NFTs? Is this something that you're into? And what do you yeah. see being the future of it? Have you made any money from it? Or what are your thoughts around NFTs? Okay. So first let's explain to people what an NFT is. Um, so NFT stands for non-fungible token. Now we've just confused everybody else even more. <laughs> so what is a non-fungible token? Non-fungible token just means it's something that cannot be duplicated. So it's like if you have a $10 bill, you can do 10 ones, two fives, you know, et, et cetera. So that would be considered fungible. Non-fungible is if it cannot be uh, divided or duplicated. So that's what non-fungible token means. What this means for artists though, is, um, well, let me just back up a little bit. So an NFT is a digital asset. It can be an album. It can be a painting. It can be Quentin Tarantino is releasing uh, old uh, videos of Kill Bill that were never seen before as NFTs. Uh, Snoop is into this. I mean, uh, like they're, they're here to stay. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a digital asset that is loaded onto the blockchain. Now the blockchain is just a digital ledger that um, applies ownership to, to certain people, right? So um, an artist can load their digital asset onto the blockchain on various different platforms and people can then buy those NFTs. So then that begs the next question, but what do you do with an NFT, right? Mm -hmm. So there are various things that you can do with an NFT. You can, um, there are people that are putting them in jewelry, right? So now you own the artwork as jewelry. Uh, there are people that are using it as, um, as a, like an entry to uh, clubs. So if you have an NFT, you can show it and then you're able to get into uh, various, when, when I say clubs, I don't necessarily mean like, you know, dancing clubs, uh, but that happens. Uh, but, you know, just various organizations that, uh, that are put together. Um, you can also use NFTs and uh, display them on special NFT screens that are now coming out. I know Samsung is doing one. Um, Token, Token Frame is another company that's um, showing NFTs. So you can use them and, and view them. Now, here's why it's really important for artists and why I'm so excited about this. Because as collectors, there's usually two reasons that people buy art. Number one is just to enjoy it in their home, right? They, there's a, a blank wall. I want to change the feeling of the room. I'm going to buy a piece of art. The second reason people buy art is as an investment, right? But in order to cash in on the investment, you have to get rid of that original piece of art. Okay, so what NFTs do and what I have done with my NFTs is that I have sold the original painting and have offered the NFT at, at, a, at a reduced rate to the buyer or the collector of that painting. So now the collector has the original mm -hmm. and then if they want to resell the NFT and I mean, people are making tons of money on selling nfts right then they can, can keep their original and sell the nft and make money as an investment now here's where it gets even better for the artist is that every time that painting is resold on the secondary market the artist gets a percentage of that sale so for instance right now um or a few weeks ago there was a picasso that sold uh, at Sotheby's. And by the way, Sotheby's and Christie's, they're all into NFTs now too. They are selling them. So it's, it's here, right? We're at the beginning stages, but it is here. Um, so a Picasso sold for, I think it was something like $70 million, or maybe it was more than that. Well, the estate, Picasso's estate gets none of that, right? It was the collector that bought it and resold it, made the money, which is fine. Mm -hmm. You know, no, no shade to that collector, like good on them. 
but the artist should get a kick of that too, yeah. right? We, we are the ones that created it. The artist should get a per percentage of that. And that is what's happening with NFTs. And if uh, the artist will be able to receive royalties in perpetuity wow. because of the blockchain. So it's very, very exciting. And um, I believe in November of 21, there was something like 11 million NFTs sold. So that's not a dollar amount. That's the number. Of number. Yeah, it's big. So that's why I was excited about it. I just thought I'm going to figure this out because uh, the for the most part, NFTs were being bought and sold by uh, young males who were in the gaming industry, right? I'm not neither young nor male, <laughs> nor tech savvy. I mean, <laughs> girl, the other day I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why my computer wasn't charging. It was like, oh, there's candy in the charger. There was like candy in there. I am so not tech savvy. It's crazy. But I am so stubborn and I thought I'm going to figure this NFT thing out so that I can teach artists how to do it because I'm so impassioned to empower artists to have financial freedom. So I figured it out uh, and um, I've been selling my own F NFTs. Uh, I'm starting to create a whole bit. This is my rebel series here and Jesus is back there. There's a whole rebel series that I'm about to release as NFTs uh, in the next few months. So yeah, I'm really excited about it. And then I created the course um, NFTs for rebels for, for artists. So that's available on my website. That's amazing. So yet again, another stream of income for artists. So exactly. Yeah. But there's no reason to be a starving artist. Well, you, no. might be when you, start, you get started. You still have yeah. But at least now there's so many opportunities for you to really expand that business and really, really grow. So I think that's phenomenal. So again, Jody, she's here to teach you how to paint, figure out what it is you like to paint, you need to find your voice, find what your yes. message is, paint the right way, get a good product, market the product, and now also NFTs. I think that's a no-brainer. It's You can get everything with you. They can learn how to do this the right way because going to art school is just not going to teach you any of this stuff. No, it's not. And I, uh, I, and there is no reason that artists can't learn this. There's no special anything. It, we, we have got this. We have got everything we need. Absolutely. Everything we need. Absolutely. So you were talking about all your paintings. I can see a few behind you. Is there one that's your absolute favorite that you will never, ever sell? Yes, there is. So it's this one right here. This is, um, this is a painting uh, that I, or a mixed media piece that I did. This is my great grandmother who was the love of my life. Uh, uh, she raised me, you know, my whole life. And then I had the honor of getting to be her caregiver in her later years. She died at 102 a few years ago. She taught me how to, um, to cuss in French because I was from Louisiana <laughs> and uh, she, I went to her when I was eight years old and told her I didn't think there was a Santa Claus. And she looked at me dead in the eyes and she says, you're right, there's no Santa. <laughs> I was like, what? Wow. No. Anyway, so this is her. And you can't, this, it's written um, across the bottom backwards. So you probably can't see it, but it's, I wrote giving zero Fs since 1904. Um, that's her. And then, she, so this is, yeah, her image. And you probably can't tell, but she's sitting in a chair and her middle finger is cocked. Oh. Like it's, it's like this. Yeah. And, I, and I wrote, this could go off at any minute. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh, so, you know, I do these mixed media pieces. Uh, there's one of, of Jesus back here. Uh, you probably can't see, but um, there is, there is the uh, a flag at the bottom, uh, the uh, BIPOC flag, as well as the LGBTQ flag. And I just said, I literally gave you one job, you know? So I turned this, you know, he's, he's like, just love each other. Just love each other. I gave you one job. And then that says, don't make me come down there. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah those are those are the things those are the rebel series that i'm working on um yeah, it's just 
<laughs> but, but then again, that's honest art. Like I can tell, I can yeah. feel your authenticity. Like I, I feel like I know you just by looking at what you're showing and what you're saying. Um, and I think everyone should strive. So your message is really clear. People should find their authenticity and be honest with their art. There is someone out there waiting for you to say, to express yourself through your art. Yes, and to not, it's really important that we don't, uh, you know, you were saying it's sometimes in this culture or these days, it's really hard to, you don't want to offend people or everything. And I think we should offend people. <laughs> I, I don't mean, I don't mean intentionally, but I just think that, you know, what, if you have something to say, somebody probably needs to hear it and to make it, make yourself vanilla. If I were just to, to tone my voice down, haven't we done that enough as women? Yes. I mean, haven't we quieted ourselves enough? We don't need that. No. I, I, and I, I say that it's women, but a lot of men as well. So I think that, uh, I think it's time to, to, to speak our truth and the people that resonate with you will be attracted to you. And those that don't will all just fall away. And that's okay. And that's okay. That is okay. So be your authentic self. Don't be afraid to express your truth. And I think that's where people get scared that my truth means it has to be your truth. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm just my truth and it will speak and resonate with someone out there and if it doesn't that's okay too it's still my <laughs> it's all good it's all I'm good gonna sleep. i'm gonna sleep <laughs> i'm gonna sleep just fine <laughs> just fine i love it okay so final words for anyone who's struck so not just painters now anyone in the art space who's thinking i've tried this i've failed it's not possible i don't know where to get started what final words or words of encouragement do you have for anyone looking to be a thriving artist in this day and age? Yeah, so I would say if you feel like you tried and you failed, I don't believe in that. I always say I, I don't win or lose, I win or I learn. Mm. So that, you know, that failure is just, it's just another opportunity. So some a, one person's starting point is, also the beginning of something else so don't give up like try again if you truly believe that you have something inside you that needs to be expressed i promise you you do you do you've got that thing that needs to be expressed and there are tools that you can get to learn how to sell it and to create a business out of it but make no mistake if you want to sell your art, you have a business and you need the business tools to do it. It's no different than if you're gonna sell, sell vacuum cleaners or shoes or whatever else, you're gonna need some business tools and you just have to have them. You just have to get them. Find me, jodyking.com. Exactly, me. go to jodyking.com. <laughs> or, or follow me on Instagram. I give away free tips and tools all the time. But yeah, that's what they need. They need to know that they, they have something to say and figure out a way to do it. Absolutely. I love that. Don't give up. There's help available. Yes. Follow her yes. Instagram, get the free tips. Or if you can sign up for the course too, I think it would be very helpful. Because again, like you said, you might know the creative part of things, but you also need to know the business side of things. They do go hand in hand if you do want to create a thriving business out of your passion. And we Absolutely. Want to we want to hear what you have to say yes the world needs what you have to offer i uh i only release my business course twice a year i'm not sure when um your listeners will be able to hear this but uh the next time it comes out is in september um so i would love to have people join me and then again you can follow me at jodyking.com for more information um i love i love supporting artists i believe that we are uh invaluable to the world I, I agree. Like you said, the, the, the feelers and the world needs more. Yes. Yeah, who can, we, 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 we're tired of the bashing and the fighting and the wars. Yes. And the peace. And I think if we had more people who did this, then definitely the world would be a better place. A hundred percent. We only have one job. Like We got one job. I gave you <laughs> one job. How hard is that? Yeah, too hard, obviously. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you so much for being here with us, Judy. This was all, it was very educational for me. At least now I know I'm an artist as well. I'm going to go to the store and start painting. But thank you so much for all the words of wisdom out there. And to all the artists out there, if you do need help, help is available. Get started, follow Jody. get the tips that you need and create a thriving business because we're all waiting to hear what you have to say through your art. <laughs> thank you so Absolutely. much for being here with us, Jody. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you for listening and we'll catch you same time next week on iRise Conversations with Joan.